afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the All-in-One Approach to Succeeding at the Piano, Book 2A. Let's take a look at page three. Here we have a wonderful technique review page. There is a technique review at the beginning of every Succeeding at the Piano book, whether it's the second edition or the All-in-One Approach. So here we just remind our students how they are supposed to play with healthy, body-friendly technique, which is one of the most important focuses of this method. So here we have a picture of a girl with a balloon growing through her spine and out the top of her head. In this way, she will feel tall, long, well-balanced, and her head will be buoyant on top of her spine and her neck, and the shoulders will be released. So we also see this nice hand position as well as the correct distance and height from the keyboard. Remember, we want our students' elbows to be slightly on top of the white keys, and we want the elbows and the arms, the free arm, to move easily from side to side. Right, so we don't want to have crocodile arms like this so that the student is really close to the piano. And we also don't want to have students come to the piano and do this because it's unattractive and it doesn't show the height of the elbow um, at the top of the white keys where it needs to be. All right, so then we form a natural hand position. There's Papa Haydn with a globe and the little girl is also having her hand over the globe. Check the natural C shape between fingers one and two. So you know succeeding at the piano strengths are many. Terrific music written from seven different composers, a wide variety of musical styles and a strong combined reading system. And correct and healthy technique are taught from the very beginning of this method. Free arm and strong fingers is the next point on this page. Imagine that all five fingers are friends. <gasps> is it that great? All fingers move together with the help of your wrist and your arm. This means that when you play, let your wrist and arm support and move along with each finger. So we don't want to have th uh, fifth fingers that stick out, third fingers that stick out, fourth fingers that are really tight <laughs> and like walking sticks, and we don't want to have thumbs that stick out in any way. So we don't want to say stretch or reach for keys. We just want the idea of the wrist and the forearm to help the smaller muscles of the fingers. So review of touch releases is the last thing on this page. We teachers must think of technique in terms of good sound. So to produce a beautiful sound, we must teach our students physical gestures. And these basic physical gestures are taught from the beginning and the students acclimate themselves to the same physical gestures which create specific sounds. Right, so in order to have a legato sound, we have to do a, a particular physical gesture. In order to have a basic staccato sound, we need to have a specific physical gesture that the student knows. In order to have a very crispy short sound, another physical gesture needs to be taught. Um, so when the student learns these and reviews them over and over, year by year, they become really fantastic technicians as well as musicians. So here we have a review of touch releases. So as I write here, touch releases are specific physical motions that are used to produce a desired sound. Each touch release feels differently in the body. Touch releases are used to create the articulations written on a page to shape phrases musically and to complete phrases and entire pieces in an artistic manner. Understanding correct technique guides a student in learning how to release tension in the arm and play with physical freedom. We know that so many students are so tight and locked up and we don't want this to happen in our own students. So Beethoven says, go ahead and see me on page five for the push-off touch release. Mozart says, see me on page 21 for the woodpecker touch release. Hi then, let's go take a look at page nine for the drip drop roll touch release. Brahms says, oh, let's see page 30 for the kickoff touch release. And Chopin says, if you look at page 40, we're gonna review the tissue box touch release. So again, I'm also reviewing the master composers so that students really know who they were. On page four and five is the book 1B review. So if the students understand what tonic is, dominant seventh with just two notes, if they understand um, 
the G major position, then they really probably can be just fine in the all-in-one 2A book. If they're coming from another uh, method and they're a transfer student, you might want to push them back a little bit um, just in order to get, fill up all those holes, all those gaps that they might have. All right, so this is a fabulous piece, I Love Saturday by Mary Leaf. The words are, my favorite day is Saturday, 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 my favorite day is Saturday. Let's go out and play, climb a tree or ride a bike. We could even take a hike, having fun is what I like. So what do you say? My favorite day is Saturday, 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 my favorite day is Saturday. Let's go out and play. Whew, wonderful, isn't it? So. This fabulous popular piece actually has quite a few three note slurs, right? If the student plays with locked wrist, dropped wrist, tight hands, that's the kind of sound we're gonna hear and we're gonna look at that very uncomfortable physical motion. So instead, this is a perfect place to drop, drop, and then roll forward and off the keys. So you might think, oh, that's a drip, drop, roll motion. It would be if it was more legato and slower. But in this piece, we want a crispy short staccato at the end of the three note slur. So we will push forward and off the keys. Remember the energy all comes from the upper arm or the free arm. And the student has to feel a follow through with their entire arm. So they can't do this and then lock and stop. Okay. So if you do have a transfer student coming into 2A for the first time, just have them do that with just one finger. Push off, forward, and off the keys, just like a kangaroo jumping off its hind legs. All right, so here we have a three note slur here, another three note slur, and listen to the sound. It just pops through the air, right? Giving our students artistic personality. At the very end of the piece, you could have the students do another push off here if you'd like. Push off. And then a push off at the end. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And the musicality girl says, use a push off touch release at the end of every pattern that looks like this. And then you see the three note motivic pattern. All right, wonderful. So now let's turn to page six and we will take a look at guide notes. Here the students are reviewing theory and you notice they learn their, they are reviewing their half steps and they will learn whole steps in this particular level and they learn all of, excuse me, they review all of their guide notes from bass G to high G. So these particular guide notes with 2A, and of course use the flashcards, use the note spellers, use the sight reading rhythm series, <gasps> my goodness, use the Energize Your Fingers Every Day series to get students really, really good at um, all of their note reading. So here are the intervals. The student now puts an X on the nearest guide note, a very important thing to do for teaching intervallic reading. Oh, yes, C is my nearest guide note. And then, hmm, that looks like it's a third and it's going up. And those two notes are C and E. So that's the combined reading system that we see all the time in succeeding at the piano. On page seven is matching and then some very easy review questions about is this a C chord and the one and five seven chord or is it a G chord, that kind of thing. So now we're ready for unit two.